Today, we will investigate why lemons are sour and let's also understand why slope is so slippery. As we do this, we will get into one more quest of humankind, our obsession to classify things. Like you know, chemistry is all about study of matter and there is so much matter all around us that we will be overwhelmed if we don't classify this matter. Till now in chemistry, you have already classified matter in multiple ways. First, you classified them as elements, mixtures and compounds. Then you classified mixtures as homogeneous and heterogeneous. On the other hand, compounds were classified as covalent and ionic. Don't forget, we also classified matter as solids, liquids and gases. Also as suspensions, solutions and colloids. So to add on to our obsession of classifying things, we will classify it in one more fashion. And we will call that as acids, bases, and solids. Have you ever wondered, are all acids corrosive? Are amino acids really acids? What about vitamin C? Is it an acid or is it a base? What about all this pH balanced shampoo that you see in the supermarket? What is the color of the Statue of Liberty? Has this been the color always from the time when France gifted it to USA? How do you exactly go about treating a bee sting? What has happened to the Taj Mahal? Are cola really good for teeth? And what exactly are we tasting when we taste something which is bitter, sour or sweet? We will get the answers to all these questions and a lot, lot more by the time you finish this chapter. Have you ever tasted a lemon or felt the burning sensation on your arm after using a cleaning solution containing ammonia? then you have interacted with the world of acids and bases. In fact, it's just too hard not to interact with them because they are everywhere. Citric acid and ammonia are just two examples of acids and bases that we encounter in our daily life. Where else do you commonly encounter them? Vinegar, which is a solution of about 5% acetic acid in water. Lemons, lime and other citrus fruits contain citric acid. Lactic acid gives you yogurt or curd its starch taste and phosphoric acid is usually added to carbonated drinks to impart that tartness. Vitamin C, that's ascorbic acid and battery acids, that's sulfuric acid are other examples. Some familiar braces are drain cleaners and baking soda. From acid indigestion to acid rain, the world of acids appear frequently in news and advertisements. Air and water pollution often involve acids and bases. Acid rain, for example, is a serious environmental problem. In arid areas, alkaline water is sometimes undrinkable. The bitter taste of tonic water, on the other hand, comes in part from quinine, a base. Did you know that our senses recognizes four tastes related to acid-base chemistry? Acids taste sour, bases taste bitter, and compounds formed when acids and bases react, that are salts, taste salty. The sweet taste is more complicated. To taste sweet, a compound must have both an acidic part and a basic part, plus the right geometry to fit the sweet taste receptors of our taste buds. But remember, in lab, you test, not taste. In this chapter, we discuss some of the chemistry of acids and bases. You use them every day. Your body processes them continuously. You will hear and read about them as long as you live. What you learn here can help you gain a better understanding of these important classes of compounds. Acids are used in steel production, metal plating, chemical analysis. They are found in the food we eat. Pancakes, muffins and bread rises because of acids and bases in their ingredients. And the tart taste of fruits come from the different acids in its flesh. Although the items described here are dramatically different, the acids in them have something in common. And understanding what that is, is the key to understanding the whole chapter. The simplest way to define an acid is to say that acids are those that release a hydrogen or a hydronium ion. So what on earth is a hydrogen or a hydronium ion? Before we answer that question, we need to understand one basic concept. How interaction happens in the world of chemistry. 